All right, our next company is going to be Rex Animal Health. Presenting for Rex Animal Health are Amado Guloy and Chad Clayton. Come on out, guys, and welcome to the stage. Hi. Go ahead. Start. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, my name is Amado Guloy, and I'm the CEO and founder of Rex. At Rex, we leverage big data in order to predict. Prevent and precisely manage disease in animals to ensure a safer and more sustainable food supply. I started my career in pharma, and so I've seen the power that big data has done in transforming human medicine. And at Rex, we've developed and brought together a team of mathematicians, computer scientists, and biologists in order to take that same big data approach to bring precision medicine to the animal health industry. So why animal health? One, there's a huge economic risk. Just one single virus in 2014 decimated the pig population, destroying livelihoods, but also dramatically infect, affecting the price of pork. Second, there's a huge public health risk. 70% of all new and emerging diseases in humans come from animals, and most forms of antibiotic resistance seen today originate on the farm. This is a map of livestock outbreaks in the United States over the past decade. We're one of the most advanced agricultural economies in the world, but we're not catching these events until it's far too late. In fact, the industry spends over $20 billion a year developing new drugs and treatments to try to manage these diseases, and it's estimated that $13 billion in losses can be prevented if we were able to catch them early on. This is where Rex comes in. At Rex, we bring in historic and real-time data, in or, and then we combine it into one standard format, and finally combine this clinical information with genomics data on the animal and disease in order to provide a comprehensive view of animal health and disease. At Rex, we've built a software platform of data visualization and analytics tools for the industry, and we have three pillars to our software. The first. Livestock veterinarians can more accurately and efficiently diagnose disease at point of care. They can also use this data to see then if there are potential disease outbreaks. Second, by mining our records, livestock veterinarians can then find the most efficient and most effective treatments to cure the disease. And finally, if none of that works, our platform also enables the pharmaceutical industry to find new gene targets and pathogens, thereby. Making、uh, drug development faster. To see how our platform is currently being used by our customers, let's switch to the demo. So, a livestock veterinarian finished a routine inspection at his farm, and he noticed a lot of his pigs coughing. He can search through our platform for respiratory symptoms to see if this is something that is, could potentially be causing a problem. And here, after going through it, he can look at the statistics of the different animals on that farm with that disease, because respiratory symptoms are often more serious indicators. And he can find the most accurate and most used diagnostic tests to, for the most efficient diagnostics. From there, he can then see for different diseases the different diseases, the different pigs that have had this disease, so that he can mine the various records to see what the most effective treatment is. Or see what other diagnostic tests he needs to test for. Now, what if it's a bacterial infection? At Rex, we have the world's first antibiotic resistance map on a farm level in the world. Here, he can search for Truparella pyogenes. That's a really common pig infection. And by looking at our records and their records in combination, he can see what the most effective drug is. The drugs that have the most efficacy are shown in green, and the drugs that are completely ineffective are shown in red. Now, what happens if a lot of drugs no longer work? Livestock companies and pharmaceutical companies often work together to create new custom drugs and vaccines. In this case, one of our customers was dealing with a, a multi-state outbreak of Salmonella Heidelberg amongst chicken farms. The livestock veterinarian then sent samples of Salmonella to the pharmaceutical company so they can make a new vaccine because it was no longer working. Salmonella has 2,800 genes, and to understand the genes that are most likely causing this new level of resistance takes months of work. But using our platform, all you need is the reference genome for Salmonella, the genomes of the actual Salmonella that was found on the farms, and we're able to predict the causal genes for this emerging trait, which in this case was antibiotic resistance. 
Now, we have three genes here that you see in our platform, and these were the same three genes that the pharmaceutical industry took almost a year to figure out before they could develop their vaccine. But we don't stop there. Metabolic pathways are the next thing that needs to be found. And in this case, a lot of genes are completely understood. Myth, not understood. But here, we're able to pull other records from other organisms to see if there are analogous genes in other bacteria, thereby giving the, data, the drug development scientists critical data to develop a new drug faster, saving time, money, and lives. Can we switch back to the slides, please? Right now, we're at some of the largest livestock and pharmaceutical companies in the world. We take advantage of a natural network effect from their customer-vendor relationships, and we charge them an annual subscription fee to access our tools and data. And then for more collaborative custom projects, we'll add on extra. At Rex, we're focused on managing disease right now, but we're not just stopping there. What we're planning on doing moving forward is, as our database grows, is to go into what we're develop, calling precision husbandry. So not only are we going to help with disease, but we're able to help with performance benchmarking and breeding decisions. So we can literally answer the question from that famous California advertisement, do happy cows make better cheese, but with science. And we want your help to do it. Today, I'm proud to announce that we're opening our citizen science project. If you want to send samples of different animals, livestock, mosquitoes, whatever, sign up on our website at rexanimalhealth.com so you can help us advance animal science and agriculture. Thank you. Nice work. Right, who has questions about animal health? So can you describe how you acquire the data and what yeah, sources right. you um, what kind of databases you use? And then also, could you describe um, how you validate scientifically the information that you're providing back to your pharma partners? Yeah, yep. so um, one, one of the first things I should mention is a lot of these records for herd health information is not electronic like it is in humans. So the first thing we have to do is digitize these records from paper records before we put into our database. We're a Kansas City company, we're proud of that, and Kansas City is the home of the Animal Health Corridor, so we have access to some of the largest livestock producers and pharma companies in the immediate area. And one of the things we've done is we've given talks on how we're you know, doing big data, making changes, and we've had a lot of support from various mentors. And they brought us different data sets, which we show them, and we're like, okay, you can see that this drug is completely ineffective on your farm, um, and that's kind of how we onboard them. The standardization process is non-trivial. Unlike human health, where we have HL7 because it's mandated by the government, we had to create our own ontology. We had to create our own version of HL7 because what one veterinarian will say is cannibalism, another veterinarian will call, call mixed fighting stress. So we had to realize and understand what do these different things mean, and we had to put a translation table, and then we developed algorithms to automate all this. So we automated both the digital ingestion and the standardization, um, and we have close, intimate uh, relationships with, with the industry on that. I, you asked a lot of questions, so I, I, did. I don't recall if I got all of them. <laughs> I was asking what, what kind of uh, scientific validation you're doing around the data once you collect the data, and who's driving that from your company? Yeah, so we have, we have molecular biologists. We, we're working with Illumina, the number one genomics company in the world, and they've helped us really analyze a lot of the genes. There's a lot of literature out there that we base our own research on. Our algorithms were based on peer-reviewed research. Uh, so we know there's scientific validation in that whenever we genotype something, we're like, okay, this is what we think from our platform, that this is the cause for this gene, and then we look in the literature and we're like, okay, we got it, right? So we, we look for things that are already known answers to test our algorithms before we move forward. So we know, like, we, we ask questions that there are already known answers for before we move forward, if that makes sense. Uh, Parna, you had a question? Yeah, it's a clarifying question. You mentioned, who are your target customers and what is your pricing and data model? Like, what, uh, how do you... Could you, could you, yeah, I didn't hear all your, of that. Who are your, are you selling to the livestock producers? And is that a subscription? Can you just describe that? Yes, so our target right now is livestock producers, really big enterprise ones, same things with the pharmaceutical industries, dealing with animal pharma. Because when you look at the market dynamics, there's been an epidemic every year. And so they're looking for anything to give them insight and sort of an edge up on, okay, can we catch this early before we move on? So we've already signed up some of the largest producers 
investors um, in the United States, if not the world in some cases, and, and we've gone through pilots with them, going through their data, developing predictive models, and they're piloting it on their farms to make sure that, okay, we're seeing something, maybe this is something we should look at and investigate further. One clarifying question there, is there any data sharing between the uh, different uh, uh, so let's, we have multiple farms in different livestock, right? But we don't necessarily share one farm with another. Unle we anonymize a lot of that because with respect to data mining for best practices, we don't want to give away other people's competitive advantage. But when it comes to things like antimicrobial resistance, what we're seeing there, or here's potential disease at farm A in this region, that we, we, we feel we have a duty to share with the rest because from a health perspective, the animal he industry needs to be made aware of some of these things. So I'm, I'm no animal health expert, but growing up in Argentina, I can claim I have a vested interest in this, in this area. How do you think about concentration? Because you're talking about going after the largest producers, and the largest producers are probably the ones that matter, and then there's a very long tail that is very hard to monetize. Yeah, so as we, as we go down, I mean, it's, animal health is a pretty consolidated market, so there's a lot of enterprise. Um, but as we look forward, the, the different data products that we're making from the analytics is going to be useful to your everyday veterinarian. Now, livestock producers have their own in-house veterinarian, but your, your, you know, Joe Farmer in rural Oklahoma or someone who goes to rodeo in Houston deals with other large livestock veterinarians and they would be using our, our system as well. So our system is really geared towards veterinarians and, and other scientists to make the decisions for the care of the animals. I'm gonna go back to the question that Wendy asked at the beginning of the, the session, which is that how do you get data? I and mean, this is not a sector that people haven't even digitized their own data, not exactly known for being very open sharing their data. So that seems to be the hardest thing to crack, almost like mission impossible. How do you do that? And make this a snappy answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, with respect to the data, a lot of the, that's one of the reasons why we're targeting some of the largest producers, uh, because they have a large market share and we can easily get critical mass at least. If they want to share. Well, we get it though. That's one of the really cool things about being in Kansas City is there's these relationships that we can tap from our different mentors from the industry um, and and we're able to show uh, what we are. One of the really cool things, as I mentioned, is this network effect. We have really happy customers on the livestock side who send us to their vendors in pharma. And then those vendors in pharma will be like, hey, we're doing it for a different division. Have we introduce you to our customers in this other thing? And it's this really sprawling network effect and the understanding that we're sensitive to their needs, so we anonymize data. Not everyone is going to know what they do, but at least from a disease perspective, antimicrobial resistance is one of the biggest problems right. um, in farms. In fact, Obama said that's like one of the things against world peace right now. Uh, so it's a huge problem, and they know they need to at least share, okay, we're seeing disease here, disease there, because there aren't even enough infrastructure efforts to make that readily available. Right. So, All right, we, sorry, but can I ask you one question? Okay, we're going to make one this question super on fast. The, on the pricing, on the pricing, it seems like you're going after a very consolidated uh, set of players, and you're charging for upfront SaaS subscription. Have you thought about sort of, you know, and your data is very useful, it pro provides some insights. Have you thought about charging for success as well, having some upside for some insights that your data provides? We've had some, some people suggest that. Uh, I mean, we've, we've just had you know, really big pilots in the moment, and so we're still developing a lot of our pricing model moving forward and seeing what's gonna be the most effective for the needs of our customers. Um, but other ways we were thinking of expanding is, one, the more data we have, the more we can charge. The more data we have, the more modules we can have. And third, um, as I mentioned, really looking at a biosecurity food safety thing, our data is useful to the entire global food supply chain. Everybody from agricultural commodities traders who want to understand disease to how it affects supply, all the way down to your whole foods to see, hey, who is going to be, who really has antibiotic resistance meat or who has quality meat because the data we have is everything on the animal from what they eat all the way to the production value in the end. Right. So it's val a value all around. We're just focused on disease right now. All right, guys, give it up for Rex Animal Health.